Flush Toilet, Wikipedia Audio A flush toilet is a toilet that disposes of human excreta by using water to flush it through a drain pipe to another location for disposal, thus maintaining a separation between humans and their excreta. Flush toilets can be designed for sitting or for squatting, in the case of squat toilets. The opposite of a flush toilet is a dry toilet, which uses no water for flushing. Flush toilets usually incorporate an S, U, J, or P-shaped bend that causes the water in the toilet bowl to collect and act as a seal against sewer gases. Since flush toilets are typically not designed to handle waste on site, their drain pipes must be connected to waste conveyance and waste treatment systems. When a toilet is flushed, the wastewater flows into a septic tank or sewage system and from there to a sewage treatment plant. A flush toilet is different from a urinal, which is designed to handle only liquid waste, or from a bidet which can be used for cleansing of the excretory areas after toilet use. Operation The focus of this article is a flush toilet that uses a mechanical flush from a water cistern that is above the toilet. A typical flush toilet is a vitreous, ceramic bowl containing water, plus plumbing to rapidly fill it with more water. The water in the toilet bowl is connected to a hollow drain pipe shaped like an upside-down U connecting the drain. One side of the U channel is arranged as a hollow siphon tube longer than the water in the bowl is high. The siphon tube connects to the drain. The top of the upside-down U-shaped drain pipe limits the height of the water in the bowl before it flows down the drain. If water is poured slowly into the bowl it simply flows over the rim of the upside down U and pours slowly down the drain thus the toilet does not flush. The standing water in the bowl acts as a barrier to sewer gas coming out of the sewer through the drain, and also as a receptacle for waste. Sewer gas is vented through a separate vent pipe attached to the sewer line. When a user flushes a toilet, a toilet flapper valve opens and allows water from a reservoir tank to quickly enter the toilet bowl. This rapid influx from the tank causes the swirling water in the bowl to rapidly rise and fill the U-shaped inverted siphon tube mounted in the back of the toilet. This full siphon tube starts the toilet's siphonic action. The siphon action quickly pulls nearly all of the water and waste in the bowl and the onrushing tank water down the drain it flushes. When most of the water has drained out of the bowl, the continuous column of water up and over the bottom of the upside down U-shaped drain pipe is broken when air enters the siphon tube. The toilet then gives its characteristic gurgle as the siphonic action ceases and no more water flows out of the toilet. After flushing, the flapper valve in the water tank closes, water lines and valves connected to the water supply refill the toilet tank and bowl. Then the toilet is again ready for use. At the top of the toilet bowl is a rim with many angled drain holes that are fed from the tank, which fill, rinse, and induce swirling in the bowl when it is flushed. Mounted above the toilet is a large holding tank with approximately 1.2 to 1.6 U.S. gallons of water in modern designs. This tank is built with a large drain 2.0 to 3.0 inches diameter hole at its bottom covered by a flapper valve that allows the water to rapidly leave the holding tank. The plumbing is built to allow entry of the tank's water into the toilet in a very short period. This water pours through the holes in the rim and a siphon jet hole about 1.0 inch diameter in the bottom of the toilet. Some designs use a large hole in the front of the rim to allow faster filling of the bowl. Another variant of the flush toilet is the poor flush toilet. This type of flush toilet has no cistern, but is flushed manually with a few liters of a small bucket. 
the flushing can use as little as 2-3 liters. This type of toilet is common in many Asian countries. The toilet can be connected to one or two pits, in which case it is called a poor flush pit latrine or a twin pit poor flush pit latrine. It can also be connected to a septic tank. A toilet's body is typically made from vitreous china, which starts out as an aqueous suspension of various minerals called a slip. It takes about 20 kilograms of slip to make a toilet. This slip is poured into the space between plaster of Paris molds. The toilet bowl, rim, tank and tank lid require separate molds. The molds are assembled and set up for filling and the slip-filled molds sit for about an hour after filling. This allows the plaster molds to absorb moisture from the slip which makes it semi-solid next to the mold surfaces but lets it remain liquid further from the surface of the molds. Then, the workers remove plugs to allow any excess liquid slip to drain from the cavities of the mold. The drained out slip leaves hollow voids inside the fixture, using less material to keep it both lighter and easier to fire in a kill. This molding process allows the formation of intricate internal waste lines in the fixture, the drain's hollow cavities are poured out as slip. At this point, the toilet parts without their molds look like and are about as strong as soft clay. After about one hour the top core mold is removed. The rim mold bottom is removed, and it then has appropriate slanted holes for the rinsing jets cut and the mounting holes for tank and seat are punched into the rim piece. Valve holes for rapid water entry into the toilet are cut into the rim pieces. The exposed top of the bowl piece is then covered with a thick slip and the still uncured rim is attached on top of the bowl so that the bowl and hollow rim are now a single piece. The bowl plus rim is then inverted and the toilet bowl is set upside down on the top rim mold to hold the pieces together as they dry. Later, all the rest of the mold pieces are removed. As the clay body dries further it hardens more and continues to shrink. After a few hours, the casting is self-supporting, and is called greenware. After the molds are removed, Workers use hand tools and sponges to smooth the edges and surface of the greenware, and to remove the mold joints or roughness, this process is called fettling. For large-scale production pieces, these steps may be automated. The parts are then left outside or put in a warm room to dry, before going through a dryer at about 93 degrees Celsius, for about 20-36 hours. Mechanical flush from a cistern. After the surfaces are smoothed, the bowls and tanks are sprayed with glaze of various kinds to get different colors. This glaze is designed to shrink and contract at the same rate as the greenware while undergoing firing. After being sprayed with glaze, the toilet bowls, tanks, and lids are placed in stacks on a conveyor belt or car that slowly goes through a large kill to be fired. The belt slowly moves the glaze-covered greenware into a tunnel kill, which has different temperature zones inside it starting at about 200 degrees Celsius at the front, increasing towards the middle to over 1,200 degrees Celsius degrees and exiting around out 90 degrees Celsius. During the firing in the kill, the greenware and glaze are vitrified as one solid finished unit. Transiting the kill takes glaze-covered greenware around 23-40 hours. After the pieces are removed from the kill and fully cooled, they are inspected for cracks or other defects. Then, the flushing mechanism may be installed on a one-piece toilet. On a two-piece toilet with a separate tank, the flushing mechanism may only be placed into the tank, with final assembly at installation.
A two-piece attaching seat and toilet bowl lid are typically mounted over the bowl to allow covering the toilet when it is not in use and to provide seating comfort. The seat may be installed at the factory, or the parts may be sold separately and assembled by a plumbing distributor or the installer. The amount of water used by conventional flush toilets usually make up a significant portion of personal daily water usage. For example, it could be as much as 50 liters per person per day if a person flushes his or her toilet five times per day with 10 liters per flush. Modern low flush toilet designs allow the use of much less water per flush 4.5 to 6 liters per flush. Some users do not flush their toilets after urination, in order to save water. Dual flush toilets allow the user to select between a flush for urine or feces, saving a significant amount of water over conventional units. The flush handle on some of these toilets is pushed up for one kind of flush and down for the other. In other designs, a segmented flush push button is used, pressing the smaller section releases less water. Manual flush Manufacture Flush toilets may, if plumbed for it, use grey water for flushing rather than potable water. Heads are typically flushed with sea water. Water usage Flushing mechanism Tank fill valve Tank style with flapper flush valve Tank style with siphon flush valve the flushing mechanism provides a large flow of water into the bowl. The mechanism usually incorporates one or more parts of the following designs. Tank fill valves are found in all tank style toilets. The valves are of two main designs, the side float design and the concentric float design. The side float design has existed for over a hundred years. The concentric design has only existed since 1957, but is gradually becoming more popular than the side float design. The side float design uses a float on the end of a lever to control the fill valve. The float is usually shaped like a ball, so the mechanism is called a ball valve or a ball cock. Cock is a term for valve, see, for example, stop cock. The float was originally made from copper sheet, but it is now usually plastic. The float is located to one side of the main valve tower at the end of a rod or arm. As the side float rises, so does the side float arm. The arm connects to the fill valve that blocks the water flow into the toilet tank, and thus maintains a constant level in the tank. Dual Flush Toilets the newer concentric float fill valve consists of a tower which is encircled by a plastic float assembly. Operation is otherwise the same as a side float fill valve, even though the float position is somewhat different. By virtue of its more compact layout, interference between the float and other obstacles is greatly reduced, thus increasing reliability. The concentric float fill valve is also designed to signal to users automatically when there is a leak in the tank, by making much more noise when a leak is present than the older style side float fill valve, which tends to be nearly silent when a slow leak is present. In a tank-based system, the storage tank collects between 6 and 17 liters of water over a period of time. This system is suitable for locations plumbed with 1 2 inch or 3 8 inch water pipes. These small diameter pipes cannot supply water quickly enough to flush the toilet, the tank is needed to supply a large volume of water in a short time. The storage tank is kept full by a tank fill valve. The storage tank is usually mounted directly upon the bowl although some tanks are mounted on the wall a few feet above the bowl in an attempt to increase the flush water pressure as it enters the bowl. 
tanks near the ceiling are flushed by means of a dangling pole chain, often with a large ornate handle, connected to a flush lever on the cistern itself. Pulling the chain remains a British euphemism for flushing the toilet, although this type of tank or cistern is becoming rare. A similar German expression is Wasser Zehen. In tanks using a flapper flush valve, the outlet at the bottom of the tank is covered by a buoyant cover, or flapper, which is held in place against a fitting by water pressure. To flush the toilet, the user pushes a lever, which lifts the flush valve from the valve seat. The valve then floats clear of the seat, allowing the tank to empty quickly into the bowl. As the water level drops, the floating flush valve descends back to the bottom of the tank and covers the outlet pipe again. This system is common in homes in the US and in continental Europe. Recently this flush system has also become available in the UK due to a change in regulations. This system, invented by Albert Giblin and common in the UK, uses a storage tank similar to that used in the flapper flush valve system above. This flush valve system is sometimes referred to as a valveless system, since no traditional type of valve is required. Some would argue, however, that any system of regulating the flow of a fluid is still technically a valve. In the siphon flush valve system, the user pushes a lever or button, forcing the water up into the tank siphon passageway which then empties the water in the tank into the bowl. The advantage of a siphon over the flush valve is that it has no sealing washers that can wear out and cause leaks, so it is favored in places where there is a need to conserve water. Until recently, the use of siphon-type cisterns was mandatory in the UK to avoid the potential waste of water by millions of leaking toilets with flapper valves but due to EU harmonisation the regulations have changed. These valves can sometimes be more difficult to operate than a flapper-based flush valve because the lever requires more torque than a flapper flush valve system. This additional torque required at the tank lever is due to the fact that a user must forcefully lift a certain amount of water up into the siphon passageway in order to initiate the siphon action in the tank. Older installations, known as high sweet combinations, used a high level cistern, fitted above head height, that was operated by pulling a chain hanging down from a lever attached to the cistern. When more modern close-coupled cistern and bowl combinations were first introduced, these were first referred to as low-sweet combinations. Modern versions have a neater-looking low-level cistern with a lever that the user can reach directly, or a close-coupled cistern that is even lower down and integrated with the bowl. In recent decades the close-coupled tank-slash-bowl combination has become the most popular residential system, as it has been found by ceramic engineers that improved waterway design is a more effective way to enhance the bowl's flushing action than high tank mounting. Dual flush versions of this design are now widely available. They have one level of water for liquid waste and a higher level for solid waste. In countries such as Australia, Israel, Singapore, or Germany which either have limitations on water consumption or where people are keen to save water, dual flush toilets are now common in both homes and public washrooms. Tank style with high pressure or pressure assist valve This system uses water main pressure to pre-pressurize a plastic tank located inside what otherwise appears to be the more typical ceramic flush tank. A flush cycle begins each time a user flushes the bowl. After a user flushes and the water in the pre-pressurized tank has finished emptying into the bowl, the outlet valve in the plastic tank shuts. Then the high-pressure water from the main refills the plastic tank. Inside the tank is an air-filled balloon-like rubber diaphragm. As the higher-pressure mains water enters the tank, 
the rubber diaphragm is also pressurized and shrinks accordingly. During flushing, the compressed air inside the diaphragm pushes the water into the bowl at a flow rate which is significantly higher than a tank-style gravity flow toilet. This system requires less water than a gravity flow toilet or alternatively can be more effective for a similar amount of water. Pressure assist toilets are sometimes found in both private bathrooms as well as light commercial installations. They seldom clog, but the pressurized tanks require replacement about once every 10 years. They also tend to be noisier, a possible concern for residential settings. Pressure assist toilets from several companies use 1.4 US gallons to 1.0 US gallon per flush. Tankless style with high pressure valve. New toilets that use similar pressure assist technology along with a bowl and trapway designed to enhance the siphon effect use only 0.8 US gallons per flush or 0.5 US gallons slash 0.95 US gallons for dual flush models. This design is also much quieter than other pressure assist or flues hometer toilets. In 1906, William Sloan first made his flues hometer style toilet flush valve, incorporating his patented design, available to the public. The design proved to be very popular and efficient, and remains so to this day. Flues hometer toilet flush valves are still often installed in commercial restrooms, and are frequently used for both toilets and urinals. Since they have no tank, they have zero recharge time, and can be used immediately by the next user of the toilet. They can be easily identified by their distinctive chrome pipe work, and by the absence of a toilet tank or cistern, wherever they are employed. Flushing with non-potable water sources Bowl design Siphoning toilet Some flus hometer models require the user to either depress a lever or press a button, which in turn opens a flush valve allowing mains pressure water to flow directly into the toilet bowl or urinal. Other flues hometer models are electronically triggered, using an infrared sensor to initiate the flushing process. Typically, on electronically triggered models, an override button is provided in case the user wishes to manually trigger flushing earlier. Some electronically triggered models also incorporate a true mechanical manual override which can be used in the event of the failure of the electronic system. In retrofit installations, a self-contained battery-powered or hardwired unit can be added to an existing manual flues hometer to flush automatically when a user departs. Once a flues hometer valve has been flushed, and after a preset interval, the flues hometer mechanism closes the valve and stops the flow. The flues hometer system requires no storage tank, but requires a high volume of water in a very short time. Thus a 3-4 inch pipe at minimum, or preferably a 1 inch pipe, must be used, but as the high volume is used only for a short duration, very little water is used for the amount of flushing efficacy delivered. Water main pressures must be above 30 pounds per square inch. While the higher water pressure employed by a flues hometer valve does scour the bowl more efficiently than a gravity-driven system, and while fewer blockages typically occur as a result of this higher water pressure, flues hometer systems still require approximately the same amount of water as a gravity system to operate. Raw water flushing including seawater flushing, is a method of water conservation, where raw water, such as seawater, is used for flush toilets. Such systems are used in places such as the majority of cities and towns in Hong Kong, Gibraltar and Avalon, California, United States.
the bowl, loo, or pan of a toilet is the receptacle that receives bodily waste. A toilet bowl is most often made of a ceramic, but can sometimes be made of stainless steel or composite plastics. Toilet bowls are mounted in any one of three basic manners, above floor mounted, wall mounted, or in floor mounted. Within the bowl, there are three main waterway design systems, the siphoning trap system, the non-siphoning trap system, and the valve closet system. Older style toilets called washout toilets are now only found in a few locations. The siphoning toilet is perhaps the most popular design in North America for residential and light commercial toilet installations. Some other terms for these types of toilets are siphon jet, siphon wash, and in North America, wash down. All siphoning toilets incorporate an S-shaped waterway. The waterways in these toilets are designed with slightly smaller diameters than a non-siphoning toilet, so that the waterway will naturally fill up with water, each time it is flushed, thus creating the siphon action. To flush the toilet the user activates a flushing mechanism, which pours a large quantity of water quickly into the bowl. This creates a flow large enough to purge the bowl's waterway of all air, thus causing the bowl to empty rapidly due to the siphon action that has been created. This flow stops as soon as the water level in the bowl drops below the first bend of the siphon, allowing air to enter the S-pipe to break the column of liquid and to halt the siphonic action. A true siphoning toilet can be easily identified by the noise it makes. If it can be heard to suck air down the drain at the end of a flush, then it is a true siphoning toilet. If not, then it is either a double trap siphonic or a non-siphoning toilet. The double trap siphonic toilet is a less common type that is exceptionally quiet when flushed. There is a device known as an aspirator which uses the flow of water on a flush to suck air from the cavity between the two traps, reducing the air pressure there to create the siphon which sucks water and waste from the toilet bowl. Towards the end of the flush the aspirator ceases being covered in water, thus allowing air into the cavity between traps to break the siphon without the noise while the final flush water fills the pan. The valve closet has a valve or flap at the exit of the bowl with a watertight seal to retain a pool of water in the pan. When the toilet is flushed, the valve is opened and the water in the pan flows rapidly out of the bowl into the drains, carrying the waste with it. The earliest type of toilet, the valve closet is now rarely used for water flush toilet systems. More complicated in design than other toilets, this design has lower reliability and is more difficult to maintain or repair. The most common use for valve closets is now in portable closets for caravans, camping, trains, and aircraft, where the flushing fluid is recycled. This design is also used in train carriages for use in areas where the waste is allowed to be simply dumped between the tracks. Washout toilets have a flat platform with a shallow pool of water. They are flushed by a jet of water from the back that drives excreta into the trap below. From there, the water flow removes it into the sewage system. An advantage of the design is that users will not get splashed from below. Washout toilets have a shallow pool of water into which waste is deposited with a trapped drain just behind this pool. Waste is cleared out from this pool of water by being swept over into the trap and then beyond into a sewer by water from the flush. Washout pans were amongst the first types of ceramic toilets invented and since the early 1970s are now only found in a decreasing number of localities in continental Europe. A washout toilet is a kind of flush toilet which were once predominantly used in Germany, Austria, and France. 
It was patented in Britain by George Jennings in 1852 and remained the standard toilet type in Britain throughout the 19th century. In the shelf style or flax peeler toilet, the bowl is designed with a receiver shelf to hold the fecal matter out of the water prior to flushing. The design prevents the occurrence of any splash up which commonly happens when fecal matter plunges into the standing water of other toilet designs. Examples of this type of toilet can be found in Australia, Austria, the Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, the Netherlands, and some regions of Poland, although it is becoming less common. One disadvantage of this design is that it may require the more intense use of a toilet brush to remove bits of feces that may have left marks on the shelf. Additionally, this design presents the disadvantage of creating a strong lingering odor since the feces is not submerged in water immediately after excretion. Similar designs are found in some early toilets in the U.S., one particular brand being labeled the Grand Niagara, as the flushing of the shelf created a waterfall effect into the drain chamber. This type of toilet is used on most older style Russian trains, made in eastern Germany, employing a pen like shutter valve discharging waste directly onto the track bed below. Usage of this toilet is permitted only while the train is moving and outside of major cities. These designs are being phased out, together with the old trains, and are being replaced with modern vacuum systems. The British singer Ian Wallace composed and performed the humorous song Never Do It at the Station, which mentioned the old-fashioned trackbed dumping toilets which were still in use during the mid-20th century in Britain. The song first advised frugal travelers to save money by avoiding pay toilets in train stations, but also reminded polite passengers not to use the onboard loo while the train was stopped at a station. In many parts of Asia, people traditionally use the toilet in a squatting position. This applies to defecation and urination by males and females. Therefore, Homes and public washrooms have squat toilets, with the toilet bowl installed in the floor. This has the advantages of not needing an additional toilet seat and also being more convenient for cultures where people use water to wash their genitals instead of toilet paper. However, Western-style toilets that are mounted at sitting height and have a plastic seat have become popular as well. Many public washrooms have both squatting and sitting toilets. In Western countries, instructions have been put up in some public toilets on the correct use of a sitting-style toilet. This is to avoid breaking the toilet or seat if someone attempts to squat on the edges. In India, the Anglo-Indian design allows the same toilet to be used in the sitting or the squatting position. Since 1994, there is a significant move towards using less water for flushing flush toilets. This has resulted in the emergence of low flush toilet designs and local or national standards on water consumption for flushing. In addition, some people modify their existing high flush toilet to use less water by placing a brick or water bottle into the toilet's water tank. Other modifications are often done on the water system itself, or a system that pollutes the water less, hence more efficient use of the water is accomplished. Urine diversion flush toilets, which were developed in Sweden, save water by using less water, or even no water, for the urine flush compared to about 6 liters for the feces flush. Pre-1994 residential and pre-1997 commercial flush toilets in the United States typically used 3.4 U.S. gallons of water per flush. In 1992, the United States Congress passed the Energy Policy Act of 1992, 
which mandated that beginning in 1994 common flush toilets use only 1.6 U.S. gallons. In response to the act, manufacturers produced low-flow toilets, which many consumers did not like because they often required more than one flush to remove solids. People unhappy with the reduced performance of the low-flow toilets resorted to driving across the border to Canada or Mexico, or buying salvaged toilets from older buildings. Manufacturers responded to consumers' complaints by improving the toilets. The improved products are generally identified as high-efficiency toilets or HETs. HETs possess an effective flush volume of 1.3 U.S. gallons or less. HETs may be single flush or dual flush. A dual flush toilet permits its user to choose between two amounts of water, depending on whether they generated solid or liquid waste. Some HETs are pressure assisted. The performance of a flush toilet may be rated by a maximum performance score. The low end of MAP scores is 250. The high end of MAP scores is 1000. A toilet with a MAP score of 1000 should provide trouble-free service. It should remove all waste with a single flush, it should not plug, it should not harbor any odor, it should be easy to keep clean. The United States Environmental Protection Agency uses a MAP score of 350 as the minimum performance threshold for HETs. 1.6 GPF toilets are also sometimes referred as ULF toilets. Methods used to make up for the inadequacies of low-flow toilets include using thinner toilet paper, plungers, and adding extra cups of water to the bowl manually. If clogging occurs, it is usually the result of an attempt to flush unsuitable items, or too much toilet paper. Flushing of large amounts of hair should also be avoided. However, clogging can occur spontaneously due to limescale fouling of the drain pipe, or by overloading the stool capacity of the toilet. Stool capacity varies among toilet designs and is based on the size of the drainage pipe, the capacity of the water tank, the velocity of a flush, and the method by which the water attempts to vacate the bowl of its contents. The size and consistency of the stool is also a contributing, but hard to predict factor. In some countries, Clogging has become more frequent due to regulations that require the use of small tank low-flush toilets in attempt to conserve water. Sometimes, three to four flushes periodically during the use of a low-flush toilet may be required to prevent clogging, thus using more water than larger tank toilets. Designs which increase the velocity of flushed water or improve the travel path can improve low-flow reliability. Partial clogging is particularly insidious, as it is usually not discovered immediately, but only later by an unsuspecting user trying to flush a loaded toilet. Overflowing of the water mixed with excrement may then occur, depending on the bowl volume, tank capacity, and severity of clogging. For this reason, rooms with flush toilets may be designed as wet rooms, with a second drain on the floor and a shower head capable of reaching the whole floor area. Common means to remedy clogging include use of a toilet plunger, drain cleaner or a plumber's snake. Studies have shown aerosol droplets are produced by flushing the toilet, that enter the air of the room. No proven cases of infection have been found, and the risk is unknown. A fecal-oral route was demonstrated for aerosol droplets that are produced by flushing the toilet. These aerosols are also called toilet plume. Toilets that used water were used in the Indus Valley Civilization. The cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro had a flush toilet in almost every house, attached to a sophisticated sewage system. 
See also Sanitation of the Indus Valley Civilization. They also appear in Gnosis and Akrotiri of the ancient Minoan civilization from the 2nd millennium BC. Primitive forms of flush toilets have been found to exist since ancient Neolithic times. The oldest Neolithic village in Britain, dating from circa 31st century BC, Scarabray, Orkney, used a form of hydraulic technology for sanitation. The village's design used a river and connecting drainage system to wash waste away. Similar toilets were in use throughout the Roman Empire from the 1st through 5th centuries AD. A very well-preserved example are the latrines at house steads on Hadrian's Wall in Britain. Such toilets did not flush in the modern sense, but had a continuous stream of running water to wash away waste. With the fall of the Roman Empire, these toilet systems fell into disuse. In 1596, Sir John Harrington published a new discourse of a stale subject, called The Metamorphosis of Ajax, describing a forerunner to the modern flush toilet installed at his house at Kelston in Somerset. The design had a flush valve to let water out of the tank, and a wash-down design to empty the bowl. He installed one for his godmother Queen Elizabeth I at Richmond Palace. With the onset of the Industrial Revolution and related advances in technology, the flush toilet began to emerge into its modern form. A crucial advance in plumbing was the S-trap, invented by the Scottish mechanic Alexander Cumming in 1775, and still in use today. This device uses the standing water to seal the outlet of the bowl preventing the escape of foul air from the sewer. His design had a sliding valve in the bowl outlet above the trap. Two years later, Samuel Prosser applied for a British patent for a plunger closet. Prolific inventor Joseph Brahma began his professional career installing water closets that were based on Alexander Cummings' patented design of 1775. He found that the current model being installed in London houses had a tendency to freeze in cold weather. In collaboration with a Mr. Allen, he improved the design by replacing the usual slide valve with a hinged flap that sealed the bottom of the bowl. He also developed a float valve system for the flush tank. Obtaining the patent for it in 1778, he began making toilets at a workshop in Denmark Street, St. Giles. The design was arguably the first practical flush toilet, and production continued well into the 19th century, used mainly on boats. It was only in the mid-19th century, with growing levels of urbanization and industrial prosperity, that the flush toilet became a widely used and marketed invention. This period coincided with the dramatic growth in the sewage system, especially in London, which made the flush toilet particularly attractive for health and sanitation reasons. George Jennings established a business manufacturing water closets, salt glaze drainage, sanitary pipes and sanitary wear at Parkstone Pottery in the 1840s where he popularized the flush toilet to middle class. At the Great Exhibition at Hyde Park held from May 1 to October 15, 1851, George Jennings installed his monkey closets in the retiring rooms of the Crystal Palace. These were the first public pay toilets, and they caused great excitement. During the exhibition, 827,280 visitors paid one penny to use them, for the penny they got a clean seat, a towel, a comb, and a shoe shine. To spend a penny became a euphemism for going to the toilet. When the exhibition finished and moved to Sydenham, the toilets were to be closed down. However, Jennings persuaded the organizers to keep them open, 
and the toilet went on to earn over £1,000 a year. He opened the first underground convenience at the Royal Exchange in 1854. He received a patent in 1852 for an improved construction of water closet, in which the pan and trap were constructed in the same piece, and so formed that there was always a small quantity of water retained in the pan itself, in addition to that in the trap which forms the water joint. He also improved the construction of valves, drain traps, forcing pumps and pump barrels. By the end of the 1850s building codes suggested that most new middle-class homes in British cities were equipped with a water closet. Another pioneering manufacturer was Thomas William Twyford, who invented the single-piece, ceramic flush toilet. The 1870s proved to be a defining period for the sanitary industry and the water closet, the debate between the simple water closet trap basin made entirely of earthenware and the very elaborate, complicated and expensive mechanical water closet would fall under public scrutiny and expert opinion. In 1875, the washout trap water closet was first sold and was found as the public's preference for basin-type water closets. By 1879, Twyford had devised his own type of the washout trap water closet, he titled it the National, and became the most popular washout water closet. Double Trap Siphonic Toilet By the 1880s, the freestanding water closet was sold and quickly gained popularity. The freestanding water closet was able to be cleaned more easily and was therefore a more hygienic water closet. Twyford's Unitas model was freestanding and made completely of earthenware. Throughout the 1880s he submitted further patents for improvements to the flushing rim and the outlet. Finally in 1888, he applied for a patent protection for his after-flush chamber, the device allowed for the basin to be refilled by a lower quantity of clean water in reserve after the water closet was flushed. The modern pedestal flush-down toilet was demonstrated by Frederick Hump Herson of the Beaufort Works, Chelsea, England in 1885. The leading companies of the period issued catalogues, established showrooms in department stores and marketed their products around the world. Twyford had showrooms for water closets in Berlin, Germany, Sydney, Australia, and Cape Town, South Africa. The Public Health Act 1875 set down stringent guidelines relating to sewers, drains, water supply and toilets and lent tacit government endorsement to the prominent water closet manufacturers of the day. Contrary to popular legend, Sir Thomas Crapper did not invent the flush toilet. He was, however, in the forefront of the industry in the late 19th century, and held nine patents, three of them for water closet improvements such as the floating ballcock. His flush toilets were designed by inventor Albert Giblin, who received a British patent for the silent valveless water waste preventer, a siphon discharge system. Crapper popularized the siphon system for emptying the tank, replacing the earlier floating valve system which was prone to leaks. Although flush toilets first appeared in Britain, they soon spread to the continent. The first such examples may have been the three water closets installed in the new townhouse of banker Nicolay August Anderson on 6 Kirk Gatton in Christiania, insured in January 1859. The toilets were probably imported from Britain, as they were referred to by the English term water closets in the insurance ledger. Another early water closet on the European continent, dating from 1860, was imported from Britain to be installed in the rooms of Queen Victoria in Ehrenborg Palace, 
she was the only one who was allowed to use it. In America, the chain pull indoor toilet was introduced in the homes of the wealthy and in hotels, soon after its invention in England in the 1880s. Flush toilets were introduced in the 1890s. William Elvis Sloan invented the Flues Hometer in 1906, which used pressurized water directly from the supply line for faster recycle time between flushes. The Flues Hometer is still in use today in public restrooms worldwide. The Vortex Flushing Toilet Bowl, which creates a self cleansing effect, was invented by Thomas Macavity Stewart of St. John. New Brunswick in 1907. Philip Haas of Dayton, Ohio, made some significant developments, including the flush rim toilet with multiple jets of water from a ring and the water closet flushing and recycling mechanism similar to those in use today. Valve Closet the company Caroma in Australia developed the Duoset cistern with two buttons and two flush volumes as a water-saving measure in 1980. Modern versions of the Duoset are now available worldwide, and save the average household 67% of their normal water usage. The term water closet was an early term for an interior or exterior room with a flushing toilet in contrast with an earth closet usually outdoors and requiring periodic emptying as night soil. Originally, the term washdown closet was used. The term water closet was coined in England around 1870. It did not reach the United States until the 1880s. Around this time, only luxury hotels and wealthy people had indoor private bathrooms. By 1890 in the U.S., there was increased public awareness of the theory of disease and of carelessly disposed human waste being contaminated and infectious. Washout Toilet Originally, the term bathroom referred only to the room where the bathtub was located but this connotation has changed in common North American usage. In the UK, the terms bathroom and toilet are used to indicate distinct functions, even though bathrooms in modern homes often include toilets. The term water closet was probably adopted because in the late 19th century, with the advent of indoor plumbing, a toilet displaced an early clothes closet, Closets being renovated to easily accommodate the spatial needs of a commode. Early indoor toilets had in fact been known as garderobes because they actually were used to store clothes, as the smell of ammonia was found to deter fleas and moths. The term water closet now often refers to a room that has both a toilet and other plumbing fixtures such as a sink or a bathtub. Plumbing manufacturers often use the term water closet to differentiate toilets from urinals. American plumbing codes refer to a toilet as a water closet or a WC. Many European languages refer to a toilet as a water or WC. The Royal Spanish Academy Dictionary accepts fata as a name for a toilet or bathroom, which is derived from the British term water closet. In French, the expression aller auxiliary waters derives from water closet. WC is used in the French language, pronounced slash ve dot sc slash. Likewise the Romanian word visu, pronounced slash vitu slash, derives from a shortened version of the abbreviation. In German, the expression clo is used alongside WC. Shelf Style Simple Flush Toilets in Old Railcars In many Asian countries and China in particular, WC is used as a universal name for the toilet, many Chinese people will make a hand sign with the forefinger and thumb held in the shape of AC while the remaining three fingers of the same hand are extended to represent AW, 
thus indicating where they are going or perhaps to explain where someone has gone. It is a commonly held misconception that when flushed, the water in a toilet bowl swirls one way if the toilet is north of the equator and the other way if south of the equator, due to the Coriolis effect usually, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. In reality, the direction that the water takes is much more determined by the direction that the bowl's rim jets are pointed and it can be made to flush in either direction in either hemisphere by simply redirecting the rim jets during manufacture. On the scale of bathtubs and toilets, the Coriolis effect is too weak to be observed except under carefully controlled laboratory conditions. Squat Toilets Low Flow and High Efficiency Flush Toilets U.S. Standards for New Toilets Maintenance and hygiene. Clogging. Aerosols. History. Ancient flush toilet systems. Development of the flush toilet. Industrial production. Spread and further developments. Etymology. Water closet. Society and culture. Swirl Direction Myth